Jada and Stitches show. I love ponchos. Ponchos are one of my favorite fallish kinds of things to make. I've made many over the years and there's a lot of different ways to make a poncho. Today we are going to show you how to make a very easy striped poncho and we've got two to show you just to give you some color inspiration and I want to talk a little bit about how this tutorial is structured today. The basic tutorial is the same whether you're making it for a child or an adult, and we've got specific sizings to start with in the tutorial. But you can basically make it all one color if you want, or stripe it if you like, using specific colors or just whatever you've got sort of in the stash, and you can make your stripes as many rows wide as you want. To give you an idea, this has got 11 rows of purple, 5 rows of light green, 3 rows of dark green, five rows of the light green again, and then I just finished off the rest of the poncho with the purple and then fringed it. We're going to show you how to fringe it also in today's tutorial. I used a chunky weight yarn for this particular poncho. Chunky weight yarn or bulky weight yarn, a size five, is going to make it thicker and warmer and you won't have to add as many rows to get the same amount of length. For this poncho, I made stripes in specific colors. I went with sort of a, an autumn theme. There's lots of like burgundies and reds and oranges in here. And the color stripes are five rows or four rows deep. One, two, three, four rows deep for a color of stripe. And then every stripe of color, I would interrupt it with a one row of white just to kind of break things up a little bit. This whole thing was made using a size four medium weight yarn and it wound up being 35 rows. The other one is 31 rows. So you can see how there's a bit of a difference in the thickness of the yarn that you choose. Um, but that's an idea for stripes as well. And I like the contrasting white. When I did the fringe, I used more white in the fringe than I did all the other colors just to kind of draw the whole poncho together and really draw attention to that pretty white along the end. If you're going to make this for a much larger person or you just want to upsize it in general because you tend to crochet tightly, we'll have some additional directions in the description box down below. That said, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a striped poncho with a fringe together. For our ponchos today, I'm using a size 5 bulky weight yarn. You can also use a size 4 medium weight yarn if you like. Both weight categories are fine for this project. You want around 1800 yards for an adult sized poncho, around 1200 yards for a child sized poncho. You can use acrylic, wool, cotton, a blend, whatever you like. I'm using acrylic, so long as you like the feel of the yarn. And if you're using multiple colors, make sure that it's all the same fiber so that they play well together when you wash this poncho down the road. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, I would recommend some stitch markers or clips so that you can mark out the point stitch of which there are four in each row. And I'm using a size six millimeter. This is also known as a J or a 10 in the US, a size four in the UK. If you're making this for a child, I recommend a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a nine in the US, a size five in the UK. And if you've got all that together, we can get started. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to begin at the top of our poncho and work our way down. So whatever color you want to begin with that will sit up near the top of your poncho, that's the color you're going to grab now. So I'm going to grab my purple. We're all going to begin with a slip knot. If you're making the adult poncho, you're going to begin with 56 chains. If you're making the child's poncho, you're going to begin with 48 chains. Once you've chained 56 for an adult or 48 for a child, make sure you do not twist your foundation chain row. Find the first chain and you're going to slip stitch to join. This is going to create the neck for our poncho. Now it's very important that you take a moment and pull this down over your head. This should fit over your head comfortably. If it doesn't, you need to upsize your hook. So you need to use a larger hook or you need to use a heavier weight category of yarn. So take a moment, make sure that fits over your head or the head of the person you're making it for. We're going to begin by chaining three. A chain three at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet. And that's the same whether you're making it for a child or an adult. 
into that same chain and if you notice it getting a little bigger that's okay you're going to work two more double crochet and this is going to create the first sort of arrow point of our poncho I highly recommend you take a moment grab one of your stitch markers or clips and just clip that middle that top middle double crochet so if I pull it apart you can see that middle of the three you're going to clip the top we're just going to constantly clip the middle of our points so every row we're going to have sort of these little points these four of them in each row and that's what's going to create that downward triangle effect of our poncho and it's really helpful if you always mark the very middle stitch of those points going forward because then you don't have to count quite as much if you're making this for an adult you're going to double crochet into each of the next 13 chains if you're making it for a child you're going to double crochet into each of the next 11 chains so you can grab it under the bottom two sort of loops or you can grab just the top loop whatever you want just be consistent all the way across you've double crocheted into the next 13 if you're making it for an adult 11 if you're making it for a child into the next chain we're all going to double crochet three times this is arrow point number two so three double crochet into the next chain and before you leave so there's one two three grab one of your clips and just clip the middle of those three it'll make it easier to notice when you come back around 13 more double crochet for an adult 11 more double crochet for a child that's 13 more double crochet for an adult 11 more if you're making it for a child into the next chain we're all going to work three double crochet so this is arrow point number three or the third point of our poncho three double crochet into the same chain pause grab a stitch marker or a clip and just clip that middle of the three right in the top there that helps identify it and if you're making it for an adult you're going to double crochet into each of the next 13 chains if you're making it for a child each of the next 11 so after that last three double crochet into the same chain you've worked 13 more if you're working it for an adult or 11 for a child last point into the next chain we're all going to work three double crochet stitches so this is going to make arrow point or cardigan or poncho I should say point number four four evenly distributed points all the way around our poncho just clip the middle of those three there we are again I've pulled it apart number two the middle one is clipped you should have 13 chains left if you're making this for an adult make sure you haven't twisted it or 11 chains left if you're working it for a child just work a double crochet into each of those remaining chains Once you've worked your last double crochet that'll bring you up to the chain three that began the whole row easier to see because we've got a clip in the middle of that three double crochet that were all worked into the same chain there you're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three and that will close the row take out the clip from that middle stitch slip stitch into it so that you always begin the new row in the very center of that arrow point and I'm going to pull it apart again so you can see all three double crochets worked into that point here we go all odd rows so we've just completed row one that's an odd row all odd rows have three double crochet worked into the very center stitch of each point all the way around all even rows and we're about to do row two that's an even row we'll have five double crochet worked into that middle point of every poncho point all the way around so four points in each row all odd rows have three double crochet worked into the middle of each of those points so the middle double crochet of that little point 
and all even rows have five double crochet worked into the middle stitch. So we begin in the middle stitch, we chain three to begin. This is beginning row two. We're going to double crochet four more stitches into that same stitch. And this is the same whether you're making it for an adult or a child. So odd rows, the arrow points each get three double crochet. The even rows, the arrow points each get five double crochet. Before you leave, find that center double crochet, and if you have to, pull it apart, chain three, four more double crochet, mark the middle one, and then you can just double crochet in each stitch all the way up to your next marked stitch. And that marked stitch will be the center of the arrow point, and I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. Just getting up to my marked stitch, this will be my second point, arrow point, second uh, corner <laughs> of my poncho. I've got it marked there with my little stitch marker, and again, if I pull it apart, you can see it's three double crochet worked into the same chain from the previous row. But because I'm on an even row, I'm going to work five double crochet into that middle stitch. And again, this is the same whether you're making it for an adult or child. Even rows, it's five double crochet into the point stitch. On odd rows, it's three double crochet into the point stitch. I always pause and pull it apart and make sure that I've got five or three, depending on the row I'm on. And before I leave, I'm just going to mark that middle stitch with my stitch marker so that when I get back round to it, I don't have to concentrate too much on counting. The only thing I'm going to say about counting is that every side, and there'll be four sides in between your points, you should always have the same number of stitches along each side. So I'm not going to bother you with actual row counts too much here, because they do change quite a bit from one row to the next. But just keep in mind that if you've got, say, 13 stitches on each row in between points, and then the next row maybe you've got 15 stitches in between each point per side. It should always be the same number of stitches. So if you find your one off or one under, then go back and check your points and make sure you haven't accidentally worked all of those stitches into the, the stitch just before, the stitch just after that middle stitch. So it's always got to be that middle stitch that you work all of those fanning out stitches into. That's good. It's going to help keep your points nice and straight running down the four corners of your poncho. And that's all you've got to do for row two. Just double crochet into each regular stitch when you get up to a marked point stitch. Work five double crochet into it. You've got two more points to go here in row two. And then we're going to jump into row three. Just working the last stitch in row two. If you're unsure when you get back up here, I don't want you to be confused by this tiny itty bitty little false stitch. Don't use the false stitch. It's very, very small. It would be difficult to get your hook into anyway, but it just appears because we're sort of crocheting around and around in circles and we're joining every row. If you're not sure if you've used the last stitch or not, then just count the number of stitches between each marked point stitch in your last side, and then count the ones between each marked point stitch, and that includes this one here. And if it's the same, then you know you've got the right number of stitches. Um, if you're short one, then you might have missed using a stitch somewhere. So that's just a helpful little trick, but don't be fooled by that tiny itty bitty little false stitch. When you finish a row, join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. When you're joining an odd row, you're only going to slip stitch into the next stitch, and that'll take you into your point stitch. When you're joining an even row, you've got to slip stitch through a couple to get to your point stitch. Remember, we always want to start a row in the point it just makes things easier, nice and tidy. Row three, and we'll just lay it down here for a second so you can see what we're working with. We've got a nice open diamond shape. So this is your neck hole. We've done row one, row two. You can sort of see the rows all shaping up here. Odd, even, odd, even, odd, even. Remember that odd is three double crochet per point stitch. Even rows are five double crochet per point stitch. We're going to start in the middle of a point every single row. Chain three counts as a double crochet. 
And because we've moved to an odd row now, row three is an odd row, we want to finish that point with two more double crochet because odd rows get three double crochet per point stitch. And that's one, two, three. You can see them there. Before you leave, make sure you mark that middle stitch. Just makes it easier to see when you get around to it. Double crochet in every stitch up to the marked point stitch. Three double crochet in each of those marked point stitches. And I'll see you back at the beginning. At the end of row three and every row, you're going to work your last double crochet, find the top of the chain three that you began with. I'm just gonna put my slip, my slip stitch marker down. Join to the top of the chain three and that completes the row. But before you put your work down, just slip stitch into that point stitch, that center point stitch. I've taken my stitch marker off it temporarily and you can lay it flat. Maybe take a moment to count all of the stitches between your stitch markers to make sure that all sides have the, an equal number of stitches. So whatever that stitch count might be, as long as they're all the same on all four sides, every single row, so if it's 27, have 27 on each side. If it's 57, have 57 on each side. Doesn't matter, as long as all four sides always have the same stitch count per row. You always have four points. Always make sure that you're marking the center point. It just makes it easier to grab an eyeball when you're working around. And once again, odd rows have three double crochet per point stitch. Even rows have five double crochet per point stitch. All you need to do now is follow this very basic pattern until you've made a, a stripe as wide as you want. If you're making it all one color, then off you go. You can just keep working and working and working until it's as tall as you like or as long as you like. I'm working on row four now. This is the beginning of row four. So I chain three and I work four more double crochet into the same point because remember, even rows have five double crochet per point stitch. So there's my five to begin with. And before I leave, I mark that middle one and off I go. I'm gonna let you work this pattern for a while, alternating three double crochet per point stitch for the odd rows, five double crochet per point stitch for the even rows, whether it's an adult or a child poncho. Work as much of that one color as you want and I'll show you how to change colors here in a little bit. So far I've done 11 rows and I'm ready to change colors. So whenever you're ready to finish one color and change to another one, you can just finish your last stitch. Slip stitch to join at the top of the chain three. Snip your yarn like I have here and just fasten off. Fasten off. You can take a moment to weave in your tail or you can just wait till the end and weave in all your tails at the same time. Then you're gonna grab your new color. I'm switching to this really great green. I love this. Start with a slip knot on your hook. You can use a longer tail if you want. Maybe I will use a bit of a longer tail just so I've got something more to weave in. There we go. And then you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in the middle of your arrow point. So you find that middle stitch. You should still be moving your stitch markers every row. Oops. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. And then you're just gonna continue like nothing changed. Chain three to begin. Because I did three double crochet into my point stitch in the last row, this is an even row, so I have to do five. So I'm gonna work four more double crochet into that point stitch. And before I leave, I'm gonna mark out that middle stitch again, just so it's easy to see when I get back around to it. And continue with the pattern. I can work this color for as long as I like, till I like the stripe width, and then I can change color again. That's all you need to do when you're changing colors. Just finish your row, slip stitch to join, fasten off. You don't need to slip stitch into the point stitch because you're joining your new color in the point stitch. 
chain three and continue the pattern exactly where you are as if nothing changed. And that's all you need to do to change colors. Nothing else changes. And uh, whenever you're ready to change colors again, just do the same thing. Once you've crocheted as many rows as you like, and that's entirely up to you, I, use, I like to use the indicator that it, once it reaches my wrist when I try it on, that's a nice length. But of course you can make it shorter or longer, whatever you like. Remember if you're adding a fringe to keep that in mind. Also when we block our ponchos or wash them, the weight of those stitches is going to pull down on the whole project so it will get a little extra length that way too. So far I've got 31 rows in my poncho. You can just slip stitch to join the top of the chain three, snip your yarn, fasten off, and take a moment to weave in all of your tails. You can, however, if you're adding a fringe, leave this tail just hanging out there because it will eventually blend into the rest of your fringe. To make a fringe, I just start cutting lengths of all of the colors I want to use in my fringe. I'm going to try and use all three of my colors equally throughout. And I start by cutting approximate lengths that are all roughly the same length. I'm going to trim the fringe afterwards too. I'm starting with individual lengths of yarn that are around 11 inches or 27 centimeters. And I just cut a whole bunch, you know, 10, 12 of each color, use those up and then cut some more. This way I don't spend too much time cutting and I don't end up over cutting um, because I don't necessarily know exactly how many lengths I'm going to need. I'm going for a nice thick fringe. So I'm using two strands together at the same time when I make my little fringe. And I'm putting them in every other stitch along the edge. So I work two strands every other stitch along the edge. And I'm alternating. I've got all three of my colors sort of in a row here. I go purple with light green, light green with dark green, dark green with purple, etc. So I've always got two going and I'm using each of the colors the same. And this is sort of a close-up of how I do that. I take my next two lengths of color, I find the approximate middle. Along the edge of my poncho I skip a stitch one away from where I work my last little fringe tassel, find the next stitch, slip my hook through it, grab the middle of both of those yarns and pull them through. I have a nice loop now that I can slip both of my thumb and forefinger through. So I reach up from behind the bottom, I grab all four of the other strands and I pull it back through the loop. Then just to make sure that I get an even sort of pull, I line up all my little ends again. So both the, say the green and both the purple so that they're more or less the same length. I don't want to sort of shorten anything by accident. And then I just pull tightly, press that knot up against the poncho, and I do that all the way along. I add a little fringe tassel, tassel every other stitch all the way around. And that's it. You can block or lightly wash and hang dry your poncho just to let it fall into position nicely. If you're going to hang your poncho, make sure you wrap a uh, towel around your hanger because you don't want to poke out the shoulders on your poncho. Otherwise, just drape it over a drying rack or lay it flat on some towels to dry and it'll help loosen up some of those stitches. And remember, ponchos aren't just for wandering around outside in the fall. They make a great cover up for inside as well. So if you're the type of person who ends up sitting for a long time and then starts to feel cold, especially in the cooler weather, one of these is great. You don't have to worry about wrapping a blanket about yourself and then getting out of it when you have to run to grab a pot or a ringing phone. This just comes with you and keeps you nice and cozy. So we hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, stay cozy, and have a great week. Bye everybody! Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.